Okay. Yes. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we die, we are alive in the Lord. Or if we live, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So, it's, so the Spirit says, for they rest from their labor. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Gordon. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn and give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated? Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. Good morning. God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be hollowed, even as the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and through the mountains tremble at its tumult, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overcome. God shall help her every day. The nations may make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. 
I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord has God of Jacob is our stronghold. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. In the word of the Lord. Be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. You know, it's hard for me to remember a time when Gordon was not happy. Am I right about that? He was always happy and cheerful, regardless of what was going on in his life. He loved the Lord and seemed to always live his life in the Lord's service. You know, sometimes it's a challenge to profess the Christian faith and then actually live that life of love and service after we leave worship. In the rule of Benedict, there's a part that challenges us to be the person we say we are. Hmm. There are things in all of our lives that always try to drag us down, and we struggle to live the life that Jesus has in mind for us. And you know, for, for those of us who wear clericals and our collar backwards, it's very important for us to strive to, to be the person that we say we are, because when we're not, everybody knows. Everybody. This morning I invite each one of us to ask ourselves, what kind of a person am I? How closely do I live by the summary of the law? You remember that says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. And the second commandment is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you need to do some work on these, I've got really good news for you. The season of Lent is the perfect time to confess your sins and be reconciled to God. God's grace makes it possible for each one of us to be the person we say we are. Now, Gordon was always, to me, the person he professed to be. And you know, his modesty was remarkable. And all the time I knew him, he never once mentioned uh, the work, the very important work he did at the Cotton Bowl football game every year, managing the pregame and halftime shows and coordinating that with the television broadcast. Amazing. And as two French horn players, we had a good time talking about the joys of band and the joys of the French horn in particular. He loved teaching music, which he did for 42 years. And he also loved Dr. Pepper. <laughs> now, Gordon loved the Lord, too. And he probably attended worship long after it was safe for him to be out walking around. 
that he would find a ride to church and he would find a ride home because he really felt like it was important for him to be here. As a priest and former hospice chaplain, I've had a lot of experience with end-of-life care. But I've never, ever, ever had an experience like Gordon's death. I went to the hospital the night before he died, and, and you know, the doctors were saying, it's almost over now, you, you better come, and uh, if whatever you want to say or pray, come and do it. And so I had my little toolbox with the Holy Sacrament in it to give him last rites. And when I got to the hospital room, Gordon was not asleep. He was able to talk, which is very unusual, right before death. And he was holding court with his room full of his family, and he was cracking jokes with his family on his deathbed. Can you imagine that? They were having a party the night before he died. So, needless to say, it was not the time for me to give him last rites. No. And the next day, he was gone. Would that all of us could enjoy life until the very last, just like Gordon did. You know, God smiled on Gordon and gave him the grace to be such a great blessing to so many people. That same grace, you know about grace, that unearned, undeserved, often unrequested help from God, that grace is available to all of us if we can just realize when we see it and accept it as God's gift. May God's grace enable all of us to live the life that God has in mind for us. May we bless, worship, and praise Him each and every day. And then, like Gordon, we can be grateful for the blessings that God gives us until we receive the greatest blessing of all, eternal life in the dwelling place that God created just for you and me. <laughs> We've never done this before, but we chilled some Dr. Pepper for the reception. So, so as you enjoy some of this after the service, Raise a cup to Gordon and, and give God thanksgiving for his life among us because Gordon will be smiling down from above on what we do. Amen. Yes, afterwards we get to raise a Dr. Pepper in celebration. Before that, I would love to maybe spend a few moments as we've gathered here in remembrance. What I'd like to do is to maybe lead us in a, a couple different ideas on our connection with uh, Gordon. Just a life that has been so full. There's been family and friends and, and folks who have worshipped together and lived life together. And, and before we gather in the fellowship hall, I'd love for us to maybe spend a few moments here in remembrance. And so maybe if I could invite you to either close your eyes or to just to think about it for a moment and, and for family members, maybe ask you to think, what's your earliest memory of Gordon? As dad, as granddad, as, as uh, whatever the, the relationship. But just think about the first moments you remember. And, and for us as church members and friends, what was it like to meet Gordon? Let's think about that just for a moment. Lord, 
God, thank you for introductions. As we meet people on this earthly pilgrimage, we are so blessed by relationship. As father, as grandfather, as father-in-law, so many remembrances of, of first introductions and then growing together. And to meet somebody at a church or a, a function in our community, we see something special and we are so grateful for those introductions. And then for those times where we can even grow more and more in relationship, maybe I'd love for you to think about this. Well, what one memory do you most hold dear about Gordon? Maybe it was something that he said to you. Maybe it was uh, an experience you shared together, a, a laugh, a, a, a something. Let's just think about a, a moment or two where we will say, thank you, Lord, for that incredible time together. Lord God, thank you that we get to share this life together, the joys and the sorrows, the celebrations and the time where we need each other's shoulder. Thank you, Lord, for Gordon being part of this journey of ours. And now I'm wondering if you might think, what is it that you would say now? Now in this celebration of life, what is it that you would hope that Gordon would hear you say? Is it a, a thank you? Is it a well done, good and faithful servant? Well, what is it that you might right now offer to the Lord as a word to him who has been our partner in this journey? Oh, there's so much to say, Lord, about Gordon. Thank you. Thank you for those ways that we can share an incredible memory and to know that we had been loved and in fellowship we have journeyed. So we say thank you, Gordon. And now maybe we uh, have one last time of thinking, and, and maybe this is in preparation because this service finds all of its meaning in the resurrection, that Christ will bring us together in glory. And so there will be a reuniting with Gordon. So maybe you think about what it is that you would like to say to him as we will join together again. What is it that you say as you will be reintroduced to Gordon in an eternal nature? Think about those words for a moment. can see Gordon now welcoming, welcoming us into eternity, there with the arms of Jesus, there with the heart of God, the promise of abundance and eternity in and through our Lord. Father God, we thank you for Gordon. Thank you for all that he's meant to us. And we look forward to them reuniting in eternity. Amen and amen. Would you please, as we do, enjoy some Dr. Pepper and some fellowship right after the service, find somebody and, and share that story or share what it is that was so special in your connection. So uh, use this time as a, a chance to find somebody that might not know your story or specifically share with the boys and the family something that has been so powerful for you. What I'd like us to do now is to have a time of prayer. I'm sorry, we are going to invite us to stand. And if you're following along in our Book of Common Prayer, we have a chance to do what's called the Apostles' Creed. It's a, a declaration of our beliefs. And we do believe that God is who he says he is. And in his promise, we find life. So together we proclaim, I believe in God, the Father Almighty 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. May I now invite you to be seated or to kneel as you prefer as we do spend some moments in prayer. For our brother Gordon, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Gordon, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Gordon, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. In a moment, I will share the peace, and I will have you respond back to me, but then find someone close to you to share peace, especially in a, a moment like this where we celebrate life, but we recognize how fragile and short life is. We find peace not in ourselves or in the circumstances of the world, but we find it in Jesus Christ, and that peace is what we breathe in and we breathe out. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you please share God's peace with someone close to you this day? Thank you so much for coming out in the rain this afternoon. What a, a chance to celebrate with family and friends. Um, in just a moment here, our um, choir will be singing an anthem and invite this time to be one where, again, we breathe in God's peace. We recognize that he is the shepherd that leads us in life and leads us into eternity. 
And then right after the anthem, we'll have our accommodation, our liturgical way of lifting Gordon into the arms of the Heavenly Father. And then we'll invite us into a time of fellowship, a reception. And then um, when it is not raining or like lightning, we are going to do the, the committal um, at a, another date. So we invite you now to meditate on God's Word, and then let us lift to the Lord our beloved Gordon. invite you to stand as you're able.
Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life and death. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when thou created me, saying, All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, not a sign, but a life everlasting. Now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Gordon, Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in light. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
go forth in the name of Christ. Now in the uh, Founders Hall for a reception and some fellowship.